and you can start with the last talk today by Kurt Peltes about Turing curves. Please. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so uh, this is on a paper with Bart uh, about um, Turing kernelization for F minor free deletion. Let me get this. Um, so we know what a kernel is. Uh, so it takes uh, as input an instance x with parameter k uh, and as output a, an instance x prime with parameter k prime. Uh, such that the size of the new instance and the new parameter are both bounded by a function of the original parameter. Um, and a tur Turing kernel, oh wait, so <laughs> um, combined with uh, an oracle that can uh, answer a small, um, small, small problem instances, we can solve any um, instance with a small parameter. Um, so a Turing kernel um, can communicate with this oracle and um, ask it multiple queries um, and eventually it should uh, give an answer itself. Uh, so we are interested in uh, polynomial Turing kernels, meaning the, um, the uh, size of the query uh, needs to be bounded by a polynomial function. Um, so let's see what, um, let's continue with uh, F minor free deletion. So this uh, for a uh, fixed um, finite set of family of graphs F. Uh, the F minor free deletion problem uh, asks um, when given a graph G and uh, an integer L, um, can we make the graph G F minor free um, by deleting at most L vertices? Um, and this uh, encodes a couple of um, known problems. Uh, for example, vertex cover and feedback vertex set can be encoded as an F minor free deletion problem by uh, choosing a speci specific um, uh, family of graphs F. Um, and there are many problems that can be encoded as an F minor free deletion problem. Um, so um, let's look at a couple of different parameterizations of F minor free deletion. So first of all, the solution size. Um, for this, uh, we know that if F contains a planar graph, then there is a polynomial kernel. Um, but we don't know a lot about um, the other case when F doesn't contain a planar graph. Um, so a different parameterization is the vertex covering number. Um, and for this, we know that for any choice of f, there is a polynomial kernel. Um, a, a next parameter to look at uh, is the feedback vertex number. Uh, so for this, um, we know something, so the original problem, a uh, feedback vertex set, uh, which is um, an F minor free deletion problem, uh, is, does actually have a polynomial kernel parameterized by the feedback vertex set. Um, and also, um, vertex cover has a polynomial kernel parameterized by the feedback vertex set. Um, and we will use this later on. Um, so. Uh, a question to, to ask here is, uh, does every uh, F minor free deletion problem admit a polynomial kernel um, when parameterized by the feedback vertex set? And this turns out not to be the case. So this is the first part of the uh, dichotomy, the negative result. Um, so for some choices of F, uh, the F minor free deletion problem parameterized by some parameter um, is mk2 hard, um, meaning we don't expect there to be uh, a kernel or a, even a churn kernel. So the parameter here is uh, the deletion distance to a graph of tree width, minimum tree width of f. Um, so for example, let's say that f contains a tree, then the minimum tree width of f is 1, and the parameter is the deletion distance to a graph of tree width 1, which is the feedback vertex set. Um, so uh, the choice of 
uh, of the, the choices of f for which this theorem applies is when uh, none of the graphs um, in f are p3 subgraph free, meaning all of the graphs contain a connected component of at least three vertices. Um, so for the other case, when there is actually a graph that is p3 subgraph free, um, there is a polynomial Chern kernel um, parameterized by the same uh, parameter. Um, so in this case, actually, the minimum tree width of f is always 1, so the parameter is always the feedback vertex set. Um, this is the dichotomy, and I want to show the uh, proof um, or proof sketch of both of them, starting with the first theorem. Um, so all oh, right, both theorems also apply to um, F subgraph free deletion. Um, so um, I'm not going to show the, um, everything that's going on here. We'll skip over the details um, for when F contains multiple graphs um, or uh, disconnected graphs. So let's assume that F contains just one graph which is connected. Um, and also P3 subgraph free, so it contains at least three vertices. Um, and also, let's just assume that this graph, which we call H, is a tree. So that means that the parameter now is the feedback vertex set. Um, so this is the theorem I will show in this, uh, the try and prove in this talk. Um, and we do this by giving a polynomial parameter transformation um, from C and F. Yes? Um, so this basically, um, this means uh, but the, the consequence of this is that we don't believe there to be a polynomial uh, churn kernel um, and also not a um, polynomial kernel. Um, so we give a polynomial parameter transformation from C and F set parameterized by the number of variables. Um, and to do this, uh, we should do the following. So when given a uh, C and F formula phi on k variables, uh, we should construct a graph G and an integer L such that um, phi is satisfiable if and only if we can make the graph G f minor 3 by deleting at most l vertices. And of course, the um, parameter, parameter shouldn't blow up. So the feedback vertex set, or the graph G, should have a feedback vertex set of size at most uh, polynomial and k. Um, so uh, I will now show how to construct this graph G. Um, and for this, um, I will. So this is the graph uh, H, which was the the, the tree that we um, set, well, the tree that was contained in F. Um, so this is a, a drawing of an arbitrary tree with three vertices. Uh, so one vertex is a leaf, one is uh, a neighbor of this leaf, and then the remaining part is a tree which contains at least mo one more vertex. Um, so we use uh, k copies of, uh, of this graph um, to start our construction of G. Um, and we label the, the leaves and their neighbors um, like this, so just one leaf and one neighbor per, per graph. Uh, to correspond with all possible literals of the uh, CNF uh, formula. Um, and then uh, for every clause in the CNF formula, we uh, create a clause gadget um, like this. Uh, for every uh, literal in this uh, clause, uh, we create three copies of, the, uh, of, uh, of H, except for the first and the last literal, where we only use two. Um, and then we use these, um, the, the one leaf for each of these uh, H subgraphs uh, to create another H subgraph over there. Um, and each of these 
the components we will connect to the associated um, vertex, um, the, the vertex associated with the literal. Um, and these uh, components are connected together like this. Uh, so, of course, we do this for, for every clause in our CNF formula. Um, and now this is our graph G. Uh, so, let's see how far we get on our constraints, uh, on our, how far we get here. Uh, so, first of all, this graph should have a, vertex cover, a feedback vertex set that is uh, small. Um, and I claim that this is, this is a, a small feedback vertex set. Um, it is, uh, has size uh, 2K. And when we remove these vertices, what remains uh, is a forest. Um, so that works. Uh, let's look at the, the rest of the goal. Um, so now we should um, show that G um, can be made f minor free uh, if and only with by deleting at most l vertices if and only if phi is satisfiable. So we need a value for l. Um, in the construction of G, uh, we use a, a number of vertex disjoint h subgraphs, um, and so for every h subgraph in here, we need to delete at least one vertex, otherwise. Um, uh, an H subgraph will remain and uh, the rest of the graph is not H minor 3. Um, and in fact, when phi is satisfiable, um, we can show that uh, we can do it with deleting exactly one vertex in each of these subgraphs. So the number of these subgraphs is our value for L. Um, and let's see what happens when phi is satisfiable. So, uh, this means that there is a satisfiable, satisfying assignment for uh, phi. Um, and if we select all the uh, vertices at the bottom here that correspond to this satisfying assignment, uh, we know that every clause gadget has at least one neighbor that is selected. Um, so let's see what happens with such a clause gadget when one neighbor is selected. Uh, we know that we have to pick exactly one vertex in each of the, the green subgraphs. Um, and in fact, we can do this by selecting one of two vertices uh, everywhere. Uh, so let's start in the middle. Um, we can select the, the top vertex over here, um, which immediately also hits this H subgraph, uh, meaning that for this H subgraph and this H subgraph, we can select this vertex and that vertex. Um, and if we continue to the left, we can immediately hit the H subgraph at the top and select the bottom two for the other. Uh, and we continue this to the left and we can also continue this to the right. And now if we delete all the um, selected uh, vertices, what remains uh, is an F minor three graph. Um, so now let's make sure that it is actually not possible to do this when phi is not satisfiable. Oh, of course, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle or at one of the ends, this still works. Um, so what happens when phi is not satisfiable? Uh, then uh, because we only um, select, uh, we select exactly one, we, we only have exactly one vertex deletion in every uh, green subgraph. Uh, there is no way to select vertices on the bottom here such that every clause gadget has at least one neighbor selected. So there will be a clause gadget that has none of its neighbors selected. Um, and in this case, we can actually find a packing of H subgraphs uh, that is one larger than the uh, budget we have for vertex deletions. So it is no longer possible to make this graph H minor three by deleting at most L vertices. Um, so now we've achieved our goal. And this is uh, the complete um, polynomial parameter tra um, transformation, which proves the uh, simpler version of our theorem. Um, 
let's continue with the second theorem. So um, now we give a polynomial turn kernel. Um, and again, I will limit myself to the choices of f, um, where f contains just one graph. And in this case, I will just consider uh, the case where this one graph um, contains only edges. So it is a matching of size m. Um, and now um, we know that if the graph H, uh, G is H minor 3, uh, it is the same as saying that the graph G uh, does not contain a matching of size M. Um, so about graphs and matchings, we have the uh, third Berg for formula, uh, which we can use to give a characterization of uh, graphs with a um, that do not contain a matching of size m, so with a maximum with the size. So this follows from the Tutberg formula. Um, the maximum size of a matching in G uh, is m minus 1, if and only if there exists um, a vertex set u, such that this formula, ho this inequality holds. And basically, um, what this shows is that we can split the graph into three parts. Um, one is the vertex set U. One is an independent set, which uh, only contains neighbors of U. And, and the remaining graph should be um, a collection, uh, or should induce a uh, collection of uh, connected components that are all of old size. Um, Yeah. Why does it not have a two m sine vertex cover? Why does? It not have two m sine vertex cover. Sorry, I didn't get your question. Does this graph not has two m sine vertex cover? Um. So this graph has a small vertex cover. Yes. Yeah. So um, the. These two parts of the graph can be bounded by um, by a function of m, um, and in fact, uh, so uh, this is never larger than three m. This is never larger than m, uh, but they're never going to hit both limits at the same time. Um, but the 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 thing here to note is that um, this is of fixed size. Uh, so if we have a large graph that uh, is h minor 3. Uh, it has a large independent set and a small vertex cover. Uh, so this is something that we are going to use in our Turing kernel. If, yeah. So for the f minor 3 deletion problem, we are given a graph G. We need to find a, a set z of size at most l, such that the remaining graph looks a little bit like this. Um, and like I said, these two graphs are of uh, these two parts are of fixed size. Uh, so we can just try every uh, subset of this size um, and see if we can find um, a set z such that this works out. Um, and of course, uh, we know that si since s does not contain neighbors of r, we know that all neighbors of R that, is not that are not already in U should be in the solution. Uh, so what remains is this graph, where we need to find a vertex cover that is uh, small enough. Um, and um, so we need to solve a, a vertex cover problem here. Uh, so we need to use the, uh, the, the f minor 3 deletion oracle in order to do this which can answer small f minor 3 deletion queries. Uh, but this is a big question, could be a big question, and it is not a uh, f minor 3 deletion question, it is a vertex cover question. Um, so I said at the beginning that um, vertex cover uh, parameterized by feedback vertex set has a polynomial kernel. So we can apply this kernel on this graph, uh, which makes um, our potential query a small vertex cover query. And then since vertex cover and f minor 3 deletion are both um, MP complete, we can 
uh, transform one into the other in polynomial time. Uh, so what we get here is a small uh, query for f minor free deletion, um, which we can ask uh, to our oracle to verify whether our guess of u and r is, is a good one. Um, so this is the churn kernel. Um, and this, um, yeah, so th this is the, the, the complete dichotomy. Um, yeah, this. <laughs> uh, so um, to uh, conclude, uh, Uh, so, on some, of course, a lot of questions are still open uh, with regard to f minor free deletion. Um, so, we started with the question uh, of f minor free deletion parameterized by Fede McFerger set. Um, and we now know that uh, for some choices of f, this is mk2 hard. Um, and we also have a polynomial Turing kernel for some other choices of f. Um, and when f contains a planar graph but not a forest, we can use the um, polynomial kernel um, for parameter by solution size to obtain a polynomial kernel for, um, for this parameterization. Um, but it is still unknown what we can do when um, f is, does not contain a planar graph. Um, but since we have a, a negative result over here, um, we it might be interesting to look at a different parameterization, uh, the deletion distance to a linear forest. Uh, so over there, our hardness result doesn't apply, and we might still be able to find a polynomial kernel or churn kernel. Um, for the case where f contains a forest, but not a p3 subgraph free graph, um, our churn kernel still works but it might be easier to improve this to um, a better running time or a normal kernel. Um, and then there still is a polynomial kernel um, for this case, and we still don't know anything about the case where um, f does not contain a planar graph. Um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. When you say if contains a P3 subgraph free graph, it contains poly to a kernel, right? Uh, yes. So, so um, it doesn't contain poly kernel. No, we don't. So, so it could the, just have yeah, it 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 could also have a, a polynomial kernel. Normal polynomial. Yeah, okay. but we we don't know. So this is also an interesting question. Yes. Questions? Not like Spanish speaker again. Thank you.